they were celebrating. And what were they celebrating? They were saying death to Israel, death to America. This is not just an attack on Israel. This is an attack on America because they hate us just as much. Well, it seems like it's all about supporting the current thing again. And so right now, instead of Ukraine or COVID, we're expected to support either Palestine or Israel. So many are trying to get Westerners involved in this situation in the Middle East. One of the things that I'm hearing a lot is that Israel, as opposed to Palestine, is a part of the West. I think all of us have noticed at this point that across the Western world, a lot of our buildings from America to Europe are covered in a projection of the Israeli flag with the Star of David on it. So obviously what this signals to a degree is that the West is in support of Israel as opposed to the Palestinians. There's always this idea that's being pushed that Israel is this beacon in the Middle East that represents us, represents Westerners. So it, it makes one wonder what exactly are we defining as the West? Because the way that I see it is that Rome, and I think you would agree and a lot of people do, that the Greeks and the Romans are the ones that are sort of the root of what it means to be a Westerner. So when you see this conflict and the urge for us to be involved in it, because this group of people on the other side of the planet presumably is a part of our identity, what exactly is the West? When, when someone says you should support Israel because they're a part of the West, what exactly does that mean? The most interesting projection of the Israeli flag was on the Arch of Titus. Isn't the Arch of Titus about the sacking of Jerusalem? Which is, it's kind of odd that they would put a star of David with the Israeli flag over top of that particular monument because it's very much a victory of the West over that group of people. Are we really allied with this country in the Middle East? Should we go fight for them? Should we support them? Are they European? And what does that mean with regards to our identity as a whole? Because as we know, at this point, it's becoming a lot harder to determine what the West is these days. And in some cases, we are being told outright that we as a group of people simply don't exist, which is obviously insane. So given all of this, let's just lay down the basics. So what exactly is the West? How is that typically defined? The Western world includes Europe, as well as any of the countries whose cultures are strongly influenced by European values, or whose populations include many people descended from European colonies. So obviously Australia or New Zealand, they would also be a part of the Western world. Broadly speaking, anybody that is European descent. But then going further back, if we're talking about the root of Western civilization, 
by and large, we all agree that that stems from the Romans and the Greeks. In the Roman myth of Romulus and Remus, descendants with origins in the Mediterranean, marked Rome's inception. As Rome grew, it absorbed all Greek, Etruscan, and Italic tribes, blending a rich cultural fabric, even those in the surrounding regions eventually becomes a part of Rome and becomes Romanized. And that was a massive group of people because the Roman Empire extended very far and it covered a lot of territory and many different groups of people were a part of what it meant to be a part of the Western world. Venturing north, Romans embraced Germanic tribes like the Goths and the Celts as well, integrating Mediterranean heritage into these new lands. This fusion underpinned the vast Roman Empire, highlighting unity amid various traditions. That said, when we're thinking about what it means to be of the West, technically the only people originally that were a part of the Western world were the Romans. Something that most people don't really seem to know is that these barbarians that ended up famously, as we all know, bringing down Western civilization, and they're always blamed for this, were actually Germanic and Celtic tribes. So, technically they're not considered to be a part of the West, extending that far back. Barbarian simply means that you are not of Rome. And so of course that word has uh, turned into a very derogatory term. So though they were technically not Romans, they still were similar enough as they intermarried with one another. And during that time, these people were working for Rome, these tribes, and they obviously would fight on behalf of Rome and they would get paid to do so. But they obviously mixed in and became Romans, some of them even having citizenship in Rome. So obviously the identity of what it means to be a Westerner has changed because obviously at one point in time it meant that you were simply someone from Rome. But obviously because of Rome extending up into Northern Europe, it absorbed those people into this identity as well. What ends up becoming a European person, obviously, is someone that isn't just Roman. Obviously, at this point, uh, somebody who is of European descent is a Westerner. Well, considering this, what then does Europe mean? What's its origin? Well, Europe, its etymology, and what it means is derived from Europa, which was a Semitic princess. More specifically, this was a Phoenician Semitic princess. That said, there is a lot of debate over this, indicating that maybe the origin is simultaneously Aryan as well. So what exactly is Aryan? What does it mean to be Semitic? And furthermore, who are the Phoenicians? And what do they tell us about what it means to be European? Complicating things further, this mythos also has its origins in Crete, where it is said that the first Europeans resided. What's interesting about the Phoenicians is that their language is actually the root language of several languages, including the Grecian alphabet, 
also interesting is that their alphabet is also the alphabet that gave rise to Old Hebrew. And Old Hebrew is very different from New Hebrew or Modern Hebrew, which is what modern day Jews use, which is a hybridization of Old Hebrew and Aramaic, which is why it looks very different. So what does this tell us? Well, studying languages is one of the ways researchers find connections between groups of people. It can tell us a lot about ourselves. So it's fascinating that our Greek language is rooted in Phoenician, while this myth of Europa likely stems from Crete. The Phoenicians lived in and controlled much of the Levant, trading extensively across the Mediterranean. Rome also controlled the region known as the Levant, which is modern day Israel and Palestine. So obviously our story as Westerners is tied to this region as it clearly had an influence on us as a whole, as Christians clearly spread out from that area. Among the Germanic tribes of North, a Visigothic chieftain commonly known as Alric the Barbarian astutely exploited the weaknesses of the Roman Empire in its corrupted and weakened state. Contrary to common belief, he and his familial line may have not adhered to pagan traditions. Instead, there's an intriguing possibility that both Alric the First and Alric the Second were connected to Aryan Christianity. This historical twist adds a layer to the fascination of our endeavor of unraveling the past, but also makes things so much more confusing. Was this a completely foreign cultural influence? Are cultures that come from the Levant to be considered not Western, given all we've discussed? It makes me wonder, what was going on in that region? How exactly did Christianity and Judaism develop? The things that happened in that region are very complex, and many would even say, per the Bible, that none of those things even happened. Many people don't even know that there was an ancient Israel, which is just strange. There was an ancient Israel, and the things that happened there are very veiled in mystery. Unknown to most, Many different groups of people lived in ancient Israel and developed the area, not just Jews, as there were 12 tribes of Israel. And they were distinct tribes, one being Dan. That's one of the most interesting tribes in the Bible, in my opinion. And what's interesting about Dan as a root word is that it potentially has connections to many groups of people from around the Mediterranean in ancient times, as the name is identical to a variant used in the Iliad. Similarly, a tribe that Alexander the Great's dynasty has mythological connections to bears an identical name as well. Could this be a similar group of people, all stemming from the same tribe as this tribe of Dan from ancient Israel? Also intriguing is Emperor Nero's wife, who according to the Roman historian Tacitus, was buried according to Jewish customs, which is absolutely fascinating. What does this reveal about relations between ancient Rome and Jerusalem? 
did these people have any real influence over the Romans? What's absolutely fascinating is taking a look at a map of ancient Israel. That'll really blow your mind because what you will see is that at one point in time, the map shows a united kingdom of Israel. But then what you see is a split. And this split is the northern region, which is called Israel, and the southern region, which is called Judea. Hmm. I wonder why that happened. What could be going on there? And then when you're looking at the map, suddenly the northern region disappears. And all we have left is Judea. So what does this tell us about our current predicament? It feels like there's still so much more we need to uncover now as it's obvious that we don't truly understand our connection to this region well enough to definitively say whether it is or isn't Western. And the same too goes with all of the cultures, people, and the religions that stem from that region. It's just still so unknown. Going back to the beginning, we're all looking at this picture of the Arch of Titus with a Star of David on it, the Israeli flag. And what we know is that there is this conflict that happened. And the conflict, which the piece was a commemoration to, was that Rome sacked Jerusalem. But why did this happen? As mentioned before, in ancient times, Rome controlled Jerusalem. All of trade in the ancient world went through the Levant. Everyone has to pay taxes on their imports that go through that region. So it actually turns out that amongst many reasons for the sacking of Jerusalem. One of the biggest reasons was that the Judeans were actually using this money to fund a war against the Romans. When the Romans found out about this, because of their treachery, they sacked Jerusalem. Here are some words from a speech Titus gave to the Jews regarding this matter. What is our chief favor of all? We have given you leave to gather up that tribute which is paid to God with such other gifts that are dedicated to him. Nor have we called those that carried these donations to account, nor prohibited them, till at length you became richer than we were ourselves, even when you were our enemies. And you made preparations for war against us with our own money. Nay, after all, when you were in the enjoyment of all of these advantages, you turned your to great plenty against those that gave it to you. And like merciless serpents, have thrown out your poison against those that treated you kindly. So interesting. Because I remember seeing this post from Eric Weinstein and he being Jewish, he said something very interesting about the Arch of Titus. Eric Weinstein writes on his Twitter, in fact, I have an obligation to stop excusing anti-Semitism. 
in struggling communities just because the last 75 years in the U.S. have been pretty good for the Jewish community. To us, 75 years is a blink of an eye in our long history. Here I am, saluting at the Arch of Titus. And obviously he's not saluting, he's flipping off the Arch of Titus. <laughs> so it kind of seems like maybe Eric Weinstein is still a little bitter about what happened in ancient times. Are other Jews upset about what happened in ancient times too? Because if the West, in America in particular, is like ancient Rome, what does this mean exactly? Are they truly our biggest ally? 